Deep within the remote wilderness of Ellensburg, Washington lies a phenomenon that has captivated the minds of many locals for decades. It is known as Mel's Hole, a seemingly bottomless pit with mysterious and bewildering properties. Thus, naturally, the hole is shrouded in mystery and conspiracy. Is it the grand entrance to hollow earth, or is it a portal to another universe? Join us as we take a detour to explore the depths of Mel's Hole, where stories about this enigmatic pit have circulated for years, attracting the attention of curious locals and paranormal enthusiasts alike. Pacific Northwest is filled with weird things like a supernatural, mysterious Mel Hole. One will encounter just a simple hole positioned next to Bigfoot sightings and giant mushrooms. Interestingly, it looks just like an ordinary pit, but it brings animals back to life. Yes, back from the dead. The pit enjoys the honor of being one of the most mysterious places in Washington. But how does the world get to know about it? Well, the legend of Mel's Hole began all with an interview for Coast to Coast AM. Mel Waters, a caller in the show, claimed to have found a real-life bottomless pit around his property. In 1997, Mel Waters, living in Kittitas County, Washington discovered a bottomless hole. With nine feet in diameter, the pit stretched 15 feet down before consuming darkness. Locals termed the pit as the Devil's Hole, as they felt it to be an unsettling pit with something wrong. Wondering what something was. It was something that locals never questioned or had time to think about. The residents simply dumped the hole with garbage without questioning why it never filled up or at least appeared to be filled up. It was Water's curious mind that raised questions, and thus he went on for testing. His strategic testing plan was to use thousands of feet of fishing lines. Waters could then measure how down it went before reaching the bottom by adding weight to the fishing line and using a sturdy rod out to the hole. His test failed to give any number, well, it technically gave the lower bound and could not prove any estimation for the upper. As far as the least goes, the weighted line did go 80,000 feet down, but the test did not confirm anything less. His conclusion was even eerier. The hole had no bottom. Water's curious mind did stop bugging him, so he thought of conducting some more tests. Well, very few in the world get a chance to observe weird things and then prove their initial hypothesis around. Waters was lucky to have a chance. So, he availed it and tested the pit in the hope of finding something sinister in the infinite depths. One of his tests included yelling. Conducting a sound test, he yelled into the pit. He expected the echo but heard the silence instead. Next, he brought a handheld radio near the hole, and interestingly it played differently. It sounded decades out of date like played in horror movies. That's also why there were few locals, the brave ones, who once approached the pit to make some analyses. However, those locals did notice one peculiar thing. Animals hated the hole. Naturally, animals would stay further away from any sort of pit, but the locals' observation was far more profound. They would not even appear near or around it. Interestingly, Water tried the analyses on his dogs and found how they would dig their paws in protest when nearing the pit. Animals might be afraid to fall, but what does a bird have to lose when flying over the pit? Several reports suggested how birds avoided flying directly over it. Each time Mel Waters got interviewed on Coast to Coast AM, he brought some interesting observations to light. One such observation was chilling. Throwing something in the pit would not guarantee it would stay there. According to Waters, one of his neighbor's dogs passed away, and to get rid of the dead body, the neighbor dropped it in the hole. Result? After a few moments, the neighbor saw his dog alive, running in the forest while still wearing its collar. Obviously, it's really hard to believe. Another of the skin-crawling Mel's Hole stories revolve around a sheep's fate. But before playing with the fate of a living animal, Mel lowered an ice bucket to the hole only to find it becoming flammable. Unable to draw any conclusion, he lowered the sheep and hoisted it back up out of the hole. Interestingly, it seemed cooked from inside. 
he saw something strange upon cutting the sheep, something resembling a fetal seal with human eyes staring back at him. He, within seconds, threw the creative back into the hole. When he shared the incident with the entire neighborhood, they claimed to have seen a similar creature around the hole before. At that moment, a wishful thinking comes to Mel's mind. Was the hole a tunnel to hollow earth or a portal to another dimension? The story becomes more dramatic when the U.S. federal agents allegedly tunned into the show when Mel hinted the existence of a hole that was possibly a portal through time. Need proofs? Mel Waters' property was seized. Additionally, he was offered $3 million to leave the country and never come back. The whole area was now under military control and Mel could not access his property. A no-fly zone was imposed. Even TerraServer, mapping site before Google, showed a complete blackout of the area. Mel relocated to Australia, but since he was missing his family, he came back two years later. Legal action was taken when he came back. The worst of it was, his bank account got empty. Strangely, a TV crew that went there to look for the bottomless hole couldn't find it. Was he a hoax? Or the U.S. military actually found the magical properties of the hole that compelled them to take legal action against Mel Waters? When back home, Mel contacted Bell again. This time, he had even more beans to spill. He was contacted by a Native American tribe based in Nevada to analyze yet another bottomless hole. The hole was a little different in appearance compared to Mel's hole. It had a metal collar surrounding the nine feet wide opening while Mel's hole had a lintel wall. The hole was there as long as the people were. Mel observed that the metal made no voice even when stroked by a tool. There was complete silence. Talking to Bell, he said, there was the presence of something extraordinary out there. He went on to say that the Basques decided to send a sheep down the well. When the crate was taken up, the sheep was dead. The Basque decided to open it up, and inside the sheep's body they found a magic seal. Mel felt the seal was uneasy, so he was generous enough to throw it in the well, a place where the seal belonged. The unbelievable had happened. Before coming to Nevada, Mel was diagnosed with cancer and had only six months to live, but after this counter, he was cancer-free. The magic seal repaid the debt. The magic seal continued to communicate with the Basques from then on through a language of beeps and clicks. None knew it was the last time Mel was addressing the world. Maybe his story got too wild and it became difficult for him to keep the show running. Mel vanished. After all, how much truth is there in Mel Waters' story? No one knows. Why? When the listeners took an interest in the Mel Hole, a geologist named Jack Powell concluded that a deep hole was not physically possible. Powell's geological expertise only pointed towards two conclusions. Waters designed a hoax, or Mel's Hole was a geographical anomaly. For centuries, the world keeps unveiling fascinating and weird places that a coherent and logical mind fails to accept or believe. Mel Hole can be listed in such places. We can't prove anything until we ourselves jump into it and witness the fascination or terror. As a result, the hole is shrouded in mystery and conspiracies about the grand entrance to hollow earth. Have you ever looked up at the night sky? wondering what mysteries our own planet holds beneath its surface? Enter the enigmatic realm of the hollow earth theory, a captivating idea that has intrigued adventurers, scientists, and conspiracy theorists for centuries. While mainstream science dismisses it as mere speculation, the idea of a hollow earth was once taken seriously by scientists and politicians. Even today, it still has a few die-hard adherents. The theory proposes that the Earth is entirely hollow or contains a substantial interior space. The outer shell of the Earth is said to be about 800 miles thick, and there are two or more concentric inner shells. The center of the Earth is said to be a habitable region with its own sun, moon, and stars. There are several variations of the hollow Earth theory. 
Some versions say that the inner Earth is inhabited by advanced civilizations, while others say that it is home to dinosaurs or other prehistoric creatures. Some people even believe that the entrancy to the hollow Earth is located in the North or South Pole. Interestingly, virtually all civilizations throughout human history from ancient to modern times have independently made references to the hollow Earth and its human-like inhabitants. A common historical theme amongst ancient cultures is the belief that the inner Earth core becomes the repository for departed spirits. For instance, searching for answers about eternal life, Gilgamesh, the king of Babylonian and Sumerian tradition, traveled to the bowels of the earth to consult with his ancestor, Utnapishtim. From Greek mythology comes Eurydice trapped in the underworld Hades, nearly rescued by her brave but not quite patient enough lover Orpheus. Christianity speaks of hell being inside the earth. Mongolian tribes believe that tunnels at earth's surface link to the subterranean world. In Hindu mythology, there is a belief in a subterranean world called Patala, which is inhabited by demons and serpents. Similarly, in Norse mythology, there is a realm called Svartalfheim, which is believed to be located beneath the Earth's surface. Moreover, there are stories of a place called Agartha, which is an inner world, and it is inhabited by people, and that they are an advanced race and even have trains and vehicles that are moving through this inner, ancient philosophy states that Agartha was first colonized thousands of years ago when a holy man led a tribe underground. Its inhabitants possess scientific knowledge and expertise beyond that of the people who reside on Earth. Buddhist theory suggests there is a race of supermen and superwomen who occasionally come to the surface to oversee the development of the human race. It is also believed that this subterranean world has millions of inhabitants and many cities. The king of this world is believed to have given orders to the Dalai Lama of Tibet, who is his terrestrial representative. His messages are transmitted through certain secret tunnels connecting the inner world of Agartha with Tibet. Over the last several centuries, the belief in the hollow earth theory has persisted, at various times coming into wider popular acceptance. It was in the 18th century that the hollow earth theory first gained popularity by John Sims, an American naval officer. Sims claimed that he had evidence that the earth was hollow, and he even proposed several expeditions to the North Pole to search for the entrance. The hollow earth theory was also taken seriously by some scientists in the 19th century. In 1869, Cyrus Teed, a doctor from upstate New York, proposed a concave hollow earth theory in which the universe itself lies inside the earth. Teed's theory was based on his belief that the earth is a living organism. And as exploration and scientific understanding evolved, the hollow earth theory gained momentum. For instance, on June 13, 2014, scientists researching the Earth's mantle announced that they have found what they believe to be a vast body of water, three times the volume of all our oceans combined contained within a mineral layer, 400 miles inside the Earth. The discovery shakes the foundation of what scientists and scholars thought they knew about the ground under our feet. We have just scratched the surface of the earth. We drilled down eight miles, and we had to stop because it got too hot out of 4,000 miles to the core of the earth. We went down to eight. Scientists can tell you more about the surface of the moon than the surface underneath our oceans. Since we have not drilled down far enough to confirm these findings, could it be that we may be wrong about the composition of our earth? Is it possible that other Earths can be found within the confines of our planet? Historically, underground realms were not relegated to mere mythology. Well, respected scientists and mathematicians have long guessed about a theory that became known as the theory of hollow Earth. The science is Edmund Halley's ISM, most famous for Halley's Comet. He was also extremely interested in the Earth, 
One of the challenges is trying to figure out what was the real structure of the inside of the Earth. Not only did he have a fascinating theory about the hollow Earth, but also that of multiple layers. 75 years later, 18th century mathematician Leonhard Boiler put forth his own hollow Earth theory with no concentric shells and the sun at the center, which spans over 600 miles. Euler was a gifted mathematician who developed his idea that the planet Earth is not only hollow. Instead, the poles are thinned, and they are introduced into the inner core at the north and south poles of the Earth. He imagined that advanced civilizations were living inside the planet. Hollow Earth will be relisted two centuries later in 1947, when famous polar explorer Admiral Richard Byrd flew reconnaissance missions over the North Pole. Admiral Byrd reported in his private journal about a mysterious land beyond the North Pole, which he called the center of the great unknown. He was able to fly to the North Pole and back, and was recorded flying over the lush green area where none should have been. And then, three years later, he flew over the South Pole. When Admiral Byrd's task force got to Antarctica, one of the first things they discovered was an entrance into a hollow earth civilization. On this inner earth, they discovered that it was inhabited by very advanced beings. Richard made a lot of unusual statements, including talking about what he called a new kind of craft that could fly from pole to pole. When Admiral Byrd got back to the United States, he was brought back to Washington. There, he was questioned very heavily about his trip, and allegedly, the government ordered Byrd to remain silent for what he witnessed during his Arctic assignment. I have just attended a staff meeting at the Pentagon. I have stated fully my discovery and the message from the master. All is duly recorded. The president has been advised. I am now detained for several hours, six hours, 39 minutes to be exact. I am interviewed intently by top security forces and a medical team. It was an ordeal. I am placed under strict control via the national security provisions of this United States of America. I am ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on the behalf of humanity. Incredible. I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. The government's cover-up became even more evident when National Geographic featured Byrd's high jump story entitled Our Navy Explores Antarctica in its October 1947 issue. But no sooner was it published, the U.S. government immediately pulled virtually every issue of the magazine from circulation. In addition to censorship of that 1947 National Geographic article, a December 1959 uh, Flying Saucer magazine article covering Byrd's polar flights also was eliminated from circulation, not unlike censorship today, with real news labeled fake news slotted for censorship or spinning bogus stories of extraterrestrial encounters that never happened, like the February 47 flight to Agartha, other deep state measures to silence the truth, have resorted to legislating a prohibition against citizens from even being able to explore deep caves. Are the feds afraid someone might actually stumble their way into Agartha's inner core? Also, for two obvious reasons, a strict ban that's forever been enforced expressly forbids planes from flying over the North and South Pole. Rest assured the evil ones are vigilantly guarding the polar gates, apprehending any and all efforts by private citizens trying to escape from topside bondage, seeking refuge in inner sanctum utopia. If there is nothing to hide or no such thing as intelligent life inhabiting our hollow planet, then why would Deep State go to such meticulous, overreaching lengths and efforts to make caves or pole flyovers so criminally off-limits to us? Let's shift to here and now reality. Something big is going on down in Antarctica as more states seek access to the White Continent. Why do they do that? <laughs> do they discover something terrifying at the end of the Earth? Things just got dramatic when BBC journalist Michael Wood, based on his research, reveals that Shambhala lies buried somewhere beneath the Himalayan mountains. This spiritually advanced inner world is believed to contain entrances not only at the poles, but also includes tunnels connecting to the Earth's surface in various sacred places, like the Tibetan capital Lhasa, 
the Great Pyramid of Giza, Italy's Mount Epomeo, California's Mount Shasta, Kentucky's Mammoth Cave, and Brazil's Mato Grosso. Even the Bermuda Triangle as a vortex point has a link to the inner world. After all, is the hollow earth theory real? Well, except that despite 21st century technology that boggles the mind, the terra firma we take for granted walking around on what we call Earth is a largely unknown entity. We've been taught to believe it's a solid spherical mass with molten mantle and a solid iron core. But where's the actual proof? Without empirical evidence, what conventional science merely postulates as the truth really is nothing more than theory. Just as those believing the Earth is hollow or flat are each advocating a theory. But when photographs and videos appear to show that there are several entrances to the inner Earth throughout the world, such as a polar opening exists at the North Pole, Kentucky Mammoth Cave in South Central Kentucky, Manaus, Brazil, Morona Santiago in Ecuador, Mato Grosso in Brazil, the Himalayan Mountains, the Great Pyramid of Giza, King Solomon's Mines, Darrow Caves, and according to that hollow Earth theory and bird South Pole testimony, Perhaps we should rethink the automatic dogma of the solid earth theory we've always assumed was correct, not unlike the religious, political, and other scientific indoctrination we've been fed all our lives that, now based on more recent incoming evidence, we're realizing is false. So let's face it, virtually everything we've been taught to be reality falls short of the honest truth, having been programmed and brainwashed from day one that prohibits any real serious or genuine inquiry questioning or challenging the prevailing dogmatic norm and order, thus by built-in design preventing exploration of alternative information, data, and theories that may well lead to different, more accurate conclusions and outcomes. Ideally, that's how the so-called scientific method works. Scientists are encouraged and free to come up with theories, test their hypotheses, and investigate outcomes to generate empirical data that supports or doesn't support their proposed hypotheses. And if new, more factual conclusions are the result, the old, less true conventional models and theories eventually fall by the wayside. But realistically, based on the previous track record, initially any new proposed theories and conclusions about truth and reality are always vehemently resisted and rejected by the established conventions of the day. But gradually as stronger evidence emerges, the truth is supposed to win out over the established false consensus. But in today's world of controlled deception and deceptive control, responsible for devolving science into a compromised, politicized, serve the master agenda as a mere elitist propaganda tool, the truth has less chance of reaching the surface to even be seen or heard, much less win out. Virtually everything we've been told or taught by our so-called education system, codeword brainwash, is pure rubbish. Look no further than our history, made of distorted lies according to the biased, self-serving agenda of the so-called victors, who are really the controllers wielding the most brute power but their paradigm of deceit is crumbling now and about to end. So, let's proceed with an open mind in our inquiry into the hollow earth hypothesis that asserts that the earth is either completely hollow at its inner core, or at the least contains considerable interior space with circular polar openings. Our compass magnets fail to work at the poles because each pole as a magnetic point simply does not exist. There is no magnetic point at either the North or South Pole, only the magnetic circular rim of each polar opening. Pilots who have flown over the poles verify this fact as their flight instruments are rendered non-functional. Plus, ponder this. If the Earth was a solid sphere, temperatures closest to the pole would logically be the coldest. But in fact, Temperatures at the poles are warmer than temperatures 600 to 1,000 miles away. The warm air convection current emanating from the polar openings obviously accounts for this difference. Science observes spinning objects with an absence of matter at the center due to centrifugal force. 
the combination of centrifugal and gravity forces acting on each other to reach equilibrium determines the speed of one full 360-degree rotation. For instance, despite the fact that Jupiter and Saturn are the largest planets in our solar system, it only takes Jupiter 9.8 hours and Saturn 10. When those two planets were initially forming and their matter was coalescing because they were spinning faster, their matter expanded to increase their radius. The lighter elements such as liquefied water and the gaseous atmosphere will tend to form on each side of the center point, materializing at both the inner and outer surfaces of the planet. Near the poles, the crusts then thinned out to form a hole at both the northern and southern extremities. That's why the Earth, as well as other planets and celestial bodies in our solar system, all have polar openings and hollowed-out centers. NASA even has indirectly admitted that Saturn has a hole at its pole, based on its infrared finding of a vortex storm that cannot be held in place without a polar opening depression. This is NASA's sneaky way of delivering half-truths while willfully withholding the other far more revealing half-truth that it too, like the Earth, also has polar openings. The colorful auroral displays at the poles have yet to be explained by the solid Earth scientists, yet are easily understood when ions pouring out from the polar openings collide with the solar ions in the Earth's magnetosphere and the varying colors correspond with the various ionized gases, hydrogen, oxygen, helium, and nitrogen. Also contributing to this phenomenon are the light waves emanating from the Earth's inner sun. The insanity of continuing to cover up and deceive us has the so-called real scientists in a conundrum trying to explain the aurora borealis instead of simply and honestly accepting the truth that would enhance all our lives except those connected to deep state fraud and criminality. The Earth's power brokers know that if the truth be known of their massive cover-up, their cabal would be forcibly overthrown and their rigid control over us would come to a screeching halt. Just a few years ago, a study confirmed that a giant ocean of water lays 254 miles deep into the mantle below the Earth's surface. The inner ocean that's believed to be 155 miles deep could supply much of the ocean water at the Earth's surface. Subduction zones are conduits connecting the outer and inner oceans. Perhaps unwittingly, this scientific study suggests that the far side of that inner layer of ocean could be the same ocean belonging to the inner world where both ocean and landmass supporting a different race inhabits. A team of scientists from Harvard believes that they have found an ancient Earth inside our Earth. They theorize this Earth inside ours may be the remnants dating back 4.5 billion years ago, prior to the collision of a planet-sized body that resulted in the Moon breaking off from our Earth. It's believed that the hemisphere on the other side of this ancient inner Earth may not have melted and therefore still remains intact inside our current Earth. This finding may also inadvertently support an inner world. In still another recent discovery, Italian scientists believe that 70% of the Earth heat is generated from within its center. They conclude that there is a sun underneath the surface of our planet. Scientists have also determined that the Earth's core is as hot as the sun's surface. So, we have found three separate studies all operating independent of each other that confirm that an inner ancient world, an ocean and a sun, all exist inside our Earth. All these latest scientific breakthroughs in science inadvertently support an inner world. Clearly, there is increasing evidence that modern science, in its rare, honest form, is catching up to the wisdom of the ancient cultures. 20th century Nazis, and 21st century Illuminati are well aware of this merging between modern science and ancient occult wisdom, except their modus operandi has been to use it selfishly to gain evil power and control over humanity. Today, we, the global masses, have a unique opportunity to bridge and integrate knowledge and truth by synthesizing modern technology with ancient wisdom for the greater good of all humanity. 
It's our responsibility to harness and impart this knowledge and wisdom to uplift and enrich all of our lives. More than any other single source of smoking gun evidence comes when we can readily see with our own eyes, thanks to orbiting satellite photographs taken since 1968. They clearly show a gaping concave hole over the North Pole. And as much as NASA consistently tries to black out the hole, obscure or remove it from public access and awareness, hundreds of pictures and videos are out there that clearly show the polar opening. There is ample visual evidence available to absolutely prove that the hollow earth theory is indeed reality. One of the alluring aspects of the hollow earth theory is the idea of hidden civilizations thriving within. The legendary city of Agartha, a utopian society nestled beneath the Himalayas, is often cited. Proponents speculate that these inner earth civilizations are more advanced than our own, holding ancient wisdom and incredible technologies. The hollow earth theory has inspired countless works of fiction, from Edgar Allan Poe's The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket to Jules Verne's Journey to the Center of the Earth. In these tales, intrepid adventurers embark on perilous journeys to uncover the mysteries hidden within our planet. A writer named William Reed published a book called Phantom of the Poles in 1906, based on available Arctic explorer records and scientific research at the time. He calculated the width of the Earth's crust, separating the surface world from the inner one to be 800 miles, corroborated by Lilkola Woodard's more recent testimony. Reed stated that the distance from pole to pole of the hollow interior was 6,400 miles. His summary of the Earth's interior. The Earth is hollow. The poles, so long sought, are phantoms. There are openings at the northern and southern extremities. In the interior are vast continents, oceans, mountains, and rivers. Vegetable and animal life are evident in this new world, and it is probably peopled by races unknown to dwellers on the Earth's surface. His description closely parallels Admiral Byrd's later observations. And now, in an age where we've mapped the moon and roved on Mars, why does the hollow Earth theory continue to captivate our minds? Perhaps it's the allure of the unknown, the desire for hidden wonders in a world where information is readily available. The idea taps into our innate curiosity and thirst for exploration, making it a timeless and fascinating topic. In conclusion, the hollow earth theory remains a testament to human imagination and the power of curiosity. So while the hollow earth theory may dwell on the fringes of scientific acceptance, its allure continues to captivate those who dare to explore the unknown. Ancient myths, geological marvels, uncharted territories, and whispers of lost civilizations intertwine, inviting us to question the limits of our knowledge. As we embark on this thrilling journey, let us remain open to the enigma that lies beneath our feet. For within the depths of our planet, the possibility of a hidden world awaits, urging us to uncover its secrets and reimagine the boundaries of our reality. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.